Hi everyone, Mike G here again with another review, this time of a memoir. Uh, a genre, if you want to call it that, that I haven't really covered all that often on my channel. Today's review is going to be about Hunger by Roxane Gay. If you haven't heard of her already or you don't remember, who is Roxane Gay? Well, she's a professor, an occasional New York Times columnist, and a writer of a few novels and a few nonfiction works as well. She's a black woman and a daughter of Haitian immigrants living in the United States. Uh, currently, I think she's at Yale University in Connecticut, although I'm not 100% sure about that. And she previously was a professor at both Eastern Illinois University and Purdue University as well. Her family was fairly well off as she was growing up, although she certainly faced some struggles specific to immigrant children and to black women. And I say all this not because it defines her as a person, but because it does influence her experiences sometimes in ways that she explores more deeply in this book. The main theme explored in this book, though, is what it's like to be fat. I use this word not as an insult, but because it's the term she uses herself. She was once, as she explains in the book, what is scientifically known as super morbidly obese, according to the BMI scale. And this book explores how she arrived at this point, how she processed this and uh, still processes it now, and how it affects her life and the way others perceive her. As she explains it, it's also deeply intertwined with the shame and coping with her feelings about sexual assault when she was a child, uh, when she was just 12 years old. So this book can be quite heart-wrenching and a challenging read at times. And she is upfront at the beginning about how this shouldn't be read as a success story of someone who overcame being fat, a trope that she skillfully dissects throughout the book as she criticizes the portrayal of fat and body image in the media. Um, taking on shows like The Biggest Loser for the way that they portray fat people and convey this notion that uh, fat people would finally be happy and comfortable with themselves if only they could buckle down and lose all that weight. Which, as is kind of obvious if you really think about it, but not so obvious at a surface level, is totally erroneous. In this book, Gay even applies that her own weight gain was a result in her response to her insecurity and feeling unsafe and a whole lot of other complicated emotions rather than the other way around. Now, in addition to all of this, we get an insight into other personal experiences of gays, but this book is a lot more focused in its theme than her collection of essays, Bad Feminist, which I also read recently and plan to review sometime soon, too. And more than just having a sharper focus, this essay collection is far more personal and vulnerable, which for me is why, although I appreciated aspects of both books, Hunger was hands down my favorite of the two and the one I'd recommend first. And that vulnerability and openness is where it really shines. This book isn't so literary. She goes for accessibility and plain speak here to speak to a broad audience. The, the book has even received some criticism for being too ordinary in this sense, but personally, I'm glad it was written this way. I don't think it would have been better if she used more complicated or academic language. On the contrary, I think it probably would have sounded less personal and less relatable. So I think this book was more often than not excellent at doing what the author aimed for. For me, though, the end section of the book was a little bit weaker than the rest. There were a few sections that just felt kind of rushed, like one where she talks about how her sexuality fits into all of this. I think she identifies as bisexual, but it doesn't feel like she really does justice to it, and this theme could probably be better explored in its own book or extended essay. Even the very end of the book, though moving and in some ways offering a little bit of relief from the heavy tone of the rest of the book, feels kind of rushed. Like, we are glad that she's becoming more optimistic at this point, but it feels abrupt hearing one minute how much she hated herself and then hearing how she's on the path to acceptance uh, just a second later. Maybe it did really happen that suddenly as a result of her injury and her reflection while she was in the hospital, but it just feels kind of hard for the reader to process it in the same way as she did, especially because the, the reader isn't going to be taking weeks and weeks to go through this experience. Now, I want to talk about a few criticisms of the book that I've seen from others, several of which I just don't really think I agree with. Uh, some people on Goodreads had a complaint, which I kind of assumed I would see, which is that this is a memoir in which the writer complains about everything and blames it on the world without taking any responsibility herself. And I do understand that perception because at times while I was listening to this book and in a slightly more irritable mood myself, I did sort of catch myself starting to think in the background, sort of subconsciously, oh, she's blaming others too much instead of taking responsibility. But then I always caught myself as I was thinking this, because I think really that this is a short-sighted way of viewing what's happening here and doesn't give the author enough credit for the amount of self-awareness that she has developed at the time of writing. The author isn't pretending that every past thought she presents in this memoir is inherently true or correct. At many points, she's displaying her disordered thinking as it existed in her mind at the time of her life she's describing. And this is well supported by some of the comments that Roxane Gay inserts herself throughout the book, where she'll say something that might seem quite cynical or assuming the worst of others, and then interject 
or at least that was how it felt at the time to my pessimistic and self-hating mind. Just to give a more concrete example of one of these instances, there's a comment she makes about how doctors are always telling her to lose weight, even when she comes in for other ailments and she, she really knows what's wrong, which is why she really hates and avoids going to the doctor as much as possible. And some of the reviews I've seen on Goodreads, for example, have said, well, that's the doctor's job. You can't change that. It is healthier important to lose weight. And I don't think she's really denying here that it would be good and healthy to lose weight. I, I think she's just exploring how frustrated this makes her feel and even implying this question of whether the well-intentioned efforts of doctors to help her get healthier might actually be backfiring by making her feel emotionally worse since she knows that she needs to lose weight, so to speak, and it's far more complicated than just going out and exercising a few times. Now you can also say, well sure, but there are some things she says where she doesn't imply that it's distorted thinking, and I still don't agree with her on those things either. And the way I think about those things is, really, it's totally fine for me. What's interesting and valuable to me in reading this memoir is not to what extent I agree with the author on every belief and value and life decision she makes, which obviously I don't because that would be really strange. What's more interesting is her experience of the world and how this has shaped her worldview and the worldviews of many others who have had similar experiences to her own. Or maybe to put it simpler, I'm not here to judge the author's life. I'm here to experience her telling of it and simply to learn from it what I can. So what's more important to me is whether she's telling her life story effectively and in a way that conveys these formative experiences as she experienced and perceived them. And for me, she is. Another criticism I saw that I think is a little fairer is that aside from being a new person's story, there's nothing fundamentally new in the themes uh, described in this book. As someone who hasn't read a bunch of other memoirs by people sexually assaulted as children or who struggled with their weight and acceptance of their bodies, I can't really say to what extent this is true. For me, it was quite new, but I totally admit that since this book came out only in 2017, that's likely more of a reflection of my own reading history than an absence of anything else like it out there. Certainly Roxane Gay can't be the first author to describe what it's like moving through American society as a fat person, but there's no denying that she's said these things in an open and accessible way that has spoken to many people out there, and for that I have to commend her. But anyway, these shortcomings of the book, even if you agree with them, were really quite minor in comparison with the things that I appreciated about this book. I found it a deeply personal account that enabled me to walk in someone else's shoes for a while and think about how the world perceives her. And I'm hopeful that this experience has made me a slightly better person with slightly more empathy for what people around me feel and experience in their own lives. I certainly recommend reading if you get a chance, and with the audiobook coming in at, at just around six hours and read by Roxane Gay herself, reading this is not exactly a massive commitment of time. I hope you like this review, and as I mentioned, I also recently read Bad Feminist by the same author, which I plan to review on this channel before too long. So if you want to see that one when I finish it, or if you just want to stay tuned to my other random book reviews, uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Until next time, bye and happy reading.